As part of a coaching process that educates athletes in addition to training them, I feel it's essential to provide the athletes with context before every training cycle as well as training session. Engagement has been proven to be much higher when athletes know why they're doing a certain drill, program or training block. That is, when they're given a sense of purpose as provocated by Simon Sinek in his book Start With Why. In the session that I've reviewed, our focus was on multi-directional speed, in particular lateral acceleration, deceleration and re-acceleration, together with auxiliary drills that were used to reinforce some of the elements of the technical model we are working towards. As the session went on, the complexity and intensity of the drills progressed, starting with closed skills and finishing with open skills at the height of the session, where we turned the task constraint into an unpredictable environment where athletes were forced to mirror each other's lateral movement. As this is where the training load was at its highest point, the session then concluded with auxiliary drills focused on core stability and dynamic mobility. As a program design we apply to every training session is based on a system, the athletes are already familiar with the template, which makes it easier to use the beginning of the session to emphasize the focus of the session, as well as which drills we're going to use in order to achieve the objective of the planned session. The athletes are free to provide input before the session begins, and there is always a degree of flexibility that goes into implementation of the planned training session. This gives the athletes a sense of being able to influence the training process up to a point and enhances trust between the coach and the athlete. The level of the input we allow or rather will seek from the athlete will vary depending on training age, uh, whereby more input will be sought from senior, more experienced athletes, while with younger athletes, feedback will be sought at the end of the session or later on. However, all the sessions would start with a discussion about daily readiness with a subjective questionnaire provided in advance of the session. That feedback together with the athlete's injury history will obviously influence modifications to the individual supply training load and any regressions to individual drills and exercises. As two of the three athletes involved in the session have some ongoing back pain issues, that was taken into account during the warm-up, which was extended for these two athletes, as well as lower prescribed load during the session itself. In this session, we actually have two former basketball players who are themselves strength and conditioning coaches. So their input was sought before the start of the session, while the third athlete is a young ice hockey player who plays at a Division I US college. So with him, I used uh, more of an explanatory approach to familiarise him with the respective drills before the start of the session. As with the training cycle, I also try to vary the amount of coaching cues given over a three-week mesocycle that I normally deliver to my athletes. With an initial week um, of a new cycle involving more cueing, then allowing more exploration by the athlete in the second week, and reinforcing the patterns in week three with more cueing again. The coaching styles or rather behaviours applied in this session as described by Moston included self-check, whereby the athletes assess their form using video feedback, guided discovery through shadowing a partner and a divergent approach which involves cooperative learning namely where some of the athletes former experience from their individual sports and subsequent inherent motor skills prompted them to discover a number of solutions to the task constraints as these a athletes i don't work with on a regular basis uh, the equipment selected for the session was very uh, minimalistic as was the technology used to evaluate the drills and technical model although I did use the Dartfish app to provide some feedback to the athletes after the first round of the lateral acceleration and deceleration drills in order to establish a common benchmark for the desired technical model we were working towards. A behaviour which I think I could improve on is communicating instructions on my expectations from the athletes concerning specific drills in a more concise manner. That's to say, having reviewed the session, I feel I was switching between internal and external cues. Although I feel that considering the nature of the training session, I could have focused more on external cues, which Nick Winkleman has highlighted as being more effective in developing speed. Perhaps one of the reasons I decided to use some internal cues was because two of the athletes who took part in the session were fellow coaches, and I thought that a couple of internal cues could help them understand how to improve on the desired technical model. Looking back, I feel that a knowledge of the result um, would have been a better strategy to employ even though the majority of the queuing over the course of the coaching session was delivered in the form of external queues. Uh, following review I noticed that I provided a lot of demonstrations for the respective exercises which uh, in addition to being my preferred style of coaching fit quite well with the kinesthetic learning nature of the athletes I was coaching as they react reacted well to kinesthetic feedback between the sets of exercises. For an advanced level athlete, I would have usually allowed more exploration and less feedback during the session itself, 
although as it had been quite some time since the athletes had been exposed to lateral acceleration and deceleration focused training session I felt it was appropriate to reinforce the technical model I was looking for uh, uh, from the athletes to achieve during the drills, particularly in terms of position. This would go against the approach favoured by coaches of top class athletes who favour guided discovery over explicit learning. Although, as mentioned, the athletes who participated in the session were a developing athlete and two former high level athletes who are no longer active professionals. The guided discovery was actually implemented in the form of a mirror drill, where the athletes were giving minimal instructions on how to shadow each other, as long as they could mirror the partner as closely as possible during the drill. After the mirror drill, which was the most intense uh, from a training load perspective, I gave the athletes feedback on how I considered they moved back to their preferred lateral movement strategies as they become fatigued, using the analogy of regression to the mean, something that the two coaches who participated in the session have heard time and time again. I thought that this prompted a productive thought process about how they move beyond the optimal technical model and use different tools from their toolbox to attempt to deceive their partner during the mirror drill, while still applying the elements of lateral acceleration and deceleration, particularly the crossover step which we trained during the session. I think it was important and valuable to sit down after the session and ask the athletes to provide one takeaway from the session. As expected, the two coaches were able to provide more thoughtful and articulated feedback than the younger hockey athlete, and this can be heard during the conversation from the session in the video. I provided reference to Bernstein's repetition without repetition mantra uh, as a thought that resonate well with them uh, as they've been exposed to some of Bernstein's principles during other training sessions that I've delivered to them in the past. Again, in order to provide context or rather a why to the training session as a whole. As is usually the case, younger athletes have trouble articulating their feedback, particularly when they are prompted to do so directly after the session. However, he spoke with his regular strength and conditioning coach who then contacted me uh, about a couple of hours later and the young, uh, young athlete expressed his satisfaction with the session, saying he greatly appreciated having worked with two senior athletes while also expressing, expressing his appreciation for the specific nature of the session which had been put in context. I feel that if I had to give one element of the session that I was particularly satisfied with, I would probably highlight the fact that I provided context for the session as a whole as well as the individual drills starting with the warm-up and culminating in the athlete's freedom to express themselves during the mirror drill. Once again, it was confirmed that when you add an element of play and competition into the session, as long as the issue of safety or risk of injury has been properly addressed, you usually get more buy-in from the athletes involved in the session. I've provided a reference to the, of the material I referred to in the vlog, which I hope will be useful to coaches who are interested in the aspect of the coaching session that I delivered uh, to my athletes for this vlog.